Let's take a second and work through a couple of quadratic story problems. The first one I want to look at is when we throw a ball off of a building. Okay. It also works if we just drop things from the air. So this is one of the ways the formula can look. So S of t, this stands for the height of the object. How high is it off the ground, whatever it is you're throwing, at a particular time t. Okay. Over here we have negative 4.9, which is half of gravity when we're measuring in meters and seconds. T is going to be our time in seconds. V sub 0, when we subscript things with a little 0, that usually means initial in math classes. So we'll call that initial velocity. What do we start it with? If we throw it, it might have an initial velocity. If we drop it, that would be 0. So drop corresponds to v naught equals 0. OK, and that last term, s sub 0, is our initial height. Okay. So if we start up on a building, we'll have an initial height. If we start from the ground and just kick it up in the air, then this might be 0 as well. All right, so let's try our first example. So a ball is thrown off of a 15-meter building with a velocity of 20 meters per second. When does it reach, when does the ball reach its maximum height? Okay. So here I have a little picture, right? The ball is going to go up, it's going right, to reach its top, and then it's going to come back down and hit the ground. Okay. When, when does it get to that high point? So let's find that formula and plug in the values we know. So negative 4.9 t squared plus initial velocity 20 t plus initial height 15. So you'll notice now that my function is quadratic t squared with a negative leading coefficient. So it's going to be an upside down parabola. And I need to know, so, right, so when is the maximum? Exactly. So when you were doing quadratic story problems, Amr asked for maxes or mins. Those are at your vertex. Okay. So max and mins will always happen at our vertex. So this one is a maximum, right, because it's upside down. So our max is at the vertex. Now, I like messy algebra just as much as the next person, but completing the square when my leading coefficient is negative 4.9, just not appealing to me. So instead, I'm going to use my vertex formula. Right. So the x part of my vertex, right, h equals negative b over 2a. So I'm in, write my t squared, my t, my constant. So negative 20 over 2 times negative 4.9. And I'll grab my calculator. You can do the same to check me. Make sure you get that denominator with some parentheses around it, or you do some division first. Two negative signs should cancel. It looks like it. I'll go ahead and round it. We'll take it to hundredths. 2.04 seconds after right, it's thrown, it reaches its maximum and then starts heading back down. Let's check the question one more time and make sure we got the answer it asked for. When does it reach its maximum height? Okay, so this is a when, so that answers that question. Okay. So now let's go ahead and do the add-on. What, what kinds of other things might you be asked about this question? Exactly. Well, what is that maximum height? So part B. What is the maximum height? that it reaches. Okay. Well, the 15, right, the height that it, it started with is already taken into account, so I don't have to worry about that. What we're going to do is now take this, right, its maximum height is the y part of the vertex. The maximum height, right, is the y part of the vertex a k a k. 
which I'm going to find by taking my height function right here, right, the height of my object at any time, including when it's at the top, and I'm just going to find s of 2.04. So every place I have a t in my s function, I'm going to plug in 2.04. And I'm going to do it on my calculator, and you're going to do it on your calculator. And we're going to meet at the bottom. It looks like it is 35.4 meters off the ground. Okay, so I'm not to scale at all. Okay, so 15, it goes another 15 and a little bit up, and then it comes back down. Okay. Now, are you ready for it? Here's the third question to see if you really know your quadratic functions. When does it hit the ground? Now this is pulling in a different type of question. It has nothing to do with the vertex of our parabola. It's when does it hit back down here? So from our formula, which you can still kind of see there on the top of the screen, when does it hit the ground? So this is our clue. I know I want to solve for t, or t equals question mark, I should say. When does it hit the ground? So what do we know about hit the ground? Yep, that's when our s of t is 0, right? My height is 0 when I've hit the ground. So what the way we find that is we just plug a 0 in for the left-hand side. Okay, it's not a just. It's a pretty extreme measure. Negative 4.9t squared plus 20t plus 15, right, equals 0. What are those t solutions? Well. I don't have enough room right here. Let's see. Quadratic formula it. Can we do that? Absolutely. Here we go. Quadratic formula. Solve for t. We're going to go fast. t equals negative b plus or minus square root b squared minus 4 times a times c all over 2 times a. And into your calculator, it goes with some parentheses. takes a while. Oh dear, so I have one answer is negative 0.647 seconds. Now that doesn't make any sense, so let's see what my other answer would be if I change it to the negative in the middle. Ah, there we go. 4.23 seconds later. Oh, there it is. Think about on the graph where this answer might be, how you might picture that on the picture up above. Okay, I would like to do one more example. I know this is taking a while. Stay with me. This next one won't have that many pieces. So this is another classic algebra question. The farmer building a pen okay, with a finite amount of fence. So here we go. A farmer wants to build a pen with three sections. He'll use a barn for one side. So here's my barn. Here's my pen, and it has three separate sections. He has 200 feet of fence to use. What is the maximum area he can enclose? Okay, so maximum area. Hey, that's probably going to be a vertex. But now I have to figure out how to write a formula for area where I can find a maximum. So I need an area formula. So with word problems, I know they can be stressful. So what I like to do is anything I see that makes sense to me, I'm going to write down. So I ha see here, right, I've drawn a picture. It's like, oh, well, I've got a rectangle there. I know that this is true. The area of this entire rectangle is x times y. Okay. Um, let's see. Oh, 
So if this is x, this is x, this is x, and this is x, I know that my max or my fence can right that these all can add up to 200. So 200 equals x plus x plus x plus x plus y. Oh, I think I'm there. Let's do it. solve this system of equations. And we want to keep this equation up top, this area one, because that's what I want to maximize. So let's solve. Let's see. Solving for y looks the easiest. So y equals 200 minus 4x. Take this amount here, plug it in for the y up top, and I'm going to have my area formula. Here it comes right here. Area equals x times y, now being played by 200 minus 4x. Okay. Doesn't look quadratic yet, but it will. Distribute your x. Area equals 200x minus 4x squared. Quadratic. Upside down. OK, wait, you'll see it. Negative 4x squared plus 200x. Better. Leading coefficient is negative. So we're upside down, parabola. So I want to find the maximum area. So maybe in your head, you've got this little picture going for our area as it relates to x. And we want to find that vertex, that high point. So you can complete the square. You can use your vertex formula, which is where I'm going to go. h equals negative b over 2a. Let's see, 200 divided by 8, 100 divided by 4, 25. OK, we need to take a second. Let's think about what that means. So I found the vertex. That's why I kind of like this little sketch here. And notice I labeled my axes when I did it. It has, OK, it's not even close to being the right, OK, it is kind of close to being the right graph. But it doesn't have to be. It just has to be an upside down parabola with the axes labeled. Because now I know that this value here that I just found is the value of x, the same x we've been talking about all along, where I get the maximum area. So this is the x part, x value, the actual x value that I used up here, turns out, that gives me the maximum area. So. Can I figure out what the y part is that gives me my maximum area? Well, I would use this perimeter. This was a perimeter equation up here, in case you didn't recognize it. Right? We just added up all the sides. I would use it, my restriction, to figure out what the y is. OK, you're right, this one here. So y equals 200 minus 4 times 25. I hear you. You don't have to do it this way, but I like it feels better to me. 200 minus, let's see, that's 100, so 100. So here I go. I'm going to label my picture because that's what I like to do. I'll pick a color so you can see it. So my x values, if they're 25 and my y value is 100, I maximize my area. Okay. I'm going to slide so we can see the question again. What is the maximum area he can enclose? Ready? Area 25 times 100? Length times width? Okay. Those of you who saw, well, hey, I have a formula here that relates area. 2x. Can't I just plug a 25 in there? Absolutely, you can. Same answer. Right, a equals 25 times 200 minus 4 times 25. 25 times 200 minus 100. Hey, that's what we just got the other way. Okay. No real add-ons for this one. Um, so that one finishes. Maximum area, here's our answer. We'll circle it. 250, I'm sorry, 
2,500 square feet.